السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي يجيبني حين أناديه ويستر علي كل عورة وأنا أعصيه ويعظم النعمة علي فلا أجازيه نحمده ونسبحه ونقدسه على آلائه ونعمائه ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وترحم على محمد وآل محمد كأفضل ما صليت وسلمت وباركت وترحمت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وصل اللهم وسلم على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين والأوصياء والصديقين وعترة نبيك الطيبين الطاهرين وأصحابه المنتجبين ومن تبعهم بإحسان وإيمان إلى يوم الدين عباد الله أوصيكم وأوصي نفسي بتقوى الله ولزوم أمره قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وكأي من نبي قاتل معه ربيون كثير فما وهنوا لما أصابهم في سبيل الله وما ضعفوا وما استكانوا والله يحب الصابرين صدق الله العلي العظيم In every project, every endeavor in this life, we need three important elements. These three elements would ensure the continuity and the success of this project. And God speaks about these are three elements in Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse 148. min kathir. How many a prophet had many dedicated people fighting alongside him. Qatala ma'ahu rabbiyuna kathir. Rabbiyun comes from the Rabb, those who belong, those who subscribe, those who believe, those who follow the Lord. Rabbiyun, dedicated to their cause. فَمَا وَهَنُوا لِمَا أَصَابَهُمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ They didn't falter in the face of what befall them in the way of God. They didn't falter. فَمَا وَهَنُوا لِمَا أَصَابَهُمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَمَا ضَعُفُوا Nor did they weaken وَمَا اسْتَكَانُوا Nor did they demean themselves وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الصَّابِرِينَ And verily, God loves those who are persevere, persevere and those who are patient. Three elements of success. Number one, فَمَا وَهَنُوا they did not falter. They were not undecided and determined. They were not confused. They were not hesitant. They knew what they were doing. Many times we begin a project without a planning, without even knowing what we are doing. We join a group. We don't know the direction of that group. We don't study it. We don't prepare for it. We are hesitant. If you are hesitant, you cannot do anything. Can you establish a business being hesitant, undecided, being confused? You can't establish a business. You can't establish a family. You can't go to school. You can't do anything in this life if you are hesitant. If people if people 
stumble and they are hesitant, they are, they are not going to be successful. فَمَا وَهَنُوا لِمَا أَصَابَهُمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ Wahan is hesitation, confusion. This is an introduction to something that I'm going to see at the end, to say at the end. On the 27th, on the 7th of Safar is the martyrdom of the second Imam, Al-Imam Al-Hassan Al-Mushtaba alayhi salatu was salam. And if you look at the history of this Imam, he had to sign a peace treaty with Muawiyah. Some people say, why? Is it possible? Is that okay to sign a peace treaty with someone like Muawiyah? The answer is in the Quran. Those who are with you, fight with you, alongside with you, support you, they have to have these three characteristics. فَمَا وَهَنُوا They do not, they are not hesitant. They do not falter. فَمَا وَهَنُوا لِمَا أَصَابَهُمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ In the ziyara of Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas alayhi salatu was salam, we say, أَشْهَدُ أَنَّكَ لَمْ تَهِنْ Imam al-Sadiq addresses him. He says, أَشْهَدُ أَنَّكَ I bear witness أَنَّكَ لَمْ تَهِنْ وَلَمْ تَنْكُلْ You are not hesitant. Some people, they go to war. They are driven to war. They are pushed to go. But they are not sure of what they are doing. Reluctantly. Sometimes they take kids to school. I remember the old days when kids used to go to school against their will. So the first two years, three years, sometimes five years, you know, they are pushed by the parents against their will. They don't want to go. This is why they would not excel. When you push some, someone to do something against his or her will, whether it is education, whether it is marriage, whether it is business, whether it is a trip, they would not enjoy it. So they do not come up with good results. فَمَا وَهَنُوا لِمَا أَصَابَهُمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ This is number one. وَمَا ضَعُفُوا They were not weakened, nor they were weakened. Because we get weakened in the beginning of any project. When you have something, when you are establishing something, people are excited. Yes, let's do this. I'm going to pay this. I'm going to give my time. I'm going to work hard. But down the road, ضَعُفُوا People are going to be weakened. This is, we have five daily prayers. So you don't get weakened spiritually. You need nourishment. This is why you need to do the exercise every day. If you don't have exercise, if you don't practice exercise, you're going to be weakened physically. Sometimes because of the psychological warfare against you, the discouragement of some people against you. You're going to be weakened. In the beginning, you were strong. You were strong. You were very happy about this project, very excited. But down the road, you become weakened. And this happens. This happens to individuals. This happens to families, to communities, to armies, to corporations, to mosques, Islamic centers. It happens to all. Da'afu, da'af, weakness. And we saw this even in the history of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa In the battle of Uhud, the battle of Uhud, 99.9% of the army ran away. 99.9%. .9 Only seven people stayed with the Prophet. In the beginning, they were happy to combat the enemy, but then they were weakened, ضعفوا. They ran away. Read chapter 3, Surah Al-Imran. Read this book. إِذْ تُصْعِدُونَ وَلَا تَلْوُونَ عَلَىٰ أَحَدٍ وَالرَّسُولُ يَدْعُوكُمْ فِي أُخْرَاكُمْ They left the Prophet behind. 99.9% .9 of the companions run away from the battlefield. Only seven people Six men and one lady, Um Amara, they stood defending the Prophet on that day, the day of Uhud. And the Prophet almost died on that day, almost died. He was heavily wounded and he was bleeding in the middle of the battlefield. They left him, they abandoned him. 
ضعفوا. This is ضعف. Because of the psychological warfare of the enemies. They use psychological warfare to frighten you. To make, to make you weak spirited. But the good followers. وَمَا ضَعُفُوا They are not weakened. وَمَا اسْتَكَانُوا The third one, the third element, istikana. Istikana is to succumb to the pressure. To demean yourself. وَمَا اسْتَكَانُوا There is a lot of pressure on you. Whether you are a father, a mother, a worker, a breadwinner, a student, a neighbor, a citizen, an army leader, a prime minister, whatever you are in your capacity. There is a lot of pressure. In the society, some people, they understand you. They sympathize with you. They encourage you. They speak nice to you. And in the same society, there are people who are مخذلين. They always discourage you. They always try to weaken you. Oh, don't do this. This is dangerous. Don't go. You are not up to this. Don't listen to those. Those who want to weaken you, do not, do not listen to them. Do not succumb to the pressure. Every act, my friends, basically every act we do, every act, even if you do the most noblest act, there are some people who are going to criticize you. You will find some people who would not like what you do. Even if you are doing the, the noblest act in this life. People say, no, this is wrong. 10% of the people, 20%, maybe 5%. But you should not listen. You should listen to what is right and do what is right. وَمَا ضَعُفُوا وَمَا اسْتَكَانُوا وَمَا اسْتَكَانُوا We read in the history of Islam that there were some leaders who were outspoken and courageous against tyranny and corruption. Corruption of some tyrants. Especially the caliphs during the Umayyad and the Abbasid eras. There were some leaders who were opposing them. Very outspoken. But then, Stakanu, after that, they succumb to the pressure. What sort of pressure? The caliph says to him, listen, I have a gift for you. He would invite him for a meal, present him with a gift, gold coins. And when people see the gold coin, right... Shining right before their eyes, some people lose their direction. They stumble. I've seen some people see food, they stumble. They can't stand anymore. They are very weak. In front of food, very weak. So those people, they, he showed them, he showed them money. In fact, the one who poisoned Imam Hassan was his wife, Ju'da bint al-Ash'ath. Can you imagine his wife? Muawiyah said to her, this is a hundred thousand dirham when you put the poison in his food. And the second payment is, you're going to marry after Hassan's death, when you poison him and kill him, you're going to marry my son Yazid ibn Muawiyah. They succumb. Many people, even sometimes good people, they succumb to the pressure. So many of the khulafa would pay Money to silence their opponents, to silence their critics. They buy them. Shira al dhamair they buy them. It happened thousands of years ago, and it is happening, and it will continue to happen till the Day of Judgment. Some people sell themselves, sell their religious, sell their conscience. They sell it to hukam, to tyrants. God says there are three important elements. In any project, any leader who is looking for followers, his followers should have these three elements. Number one, فَمَا وَهَنُوا فَمَا وَهَنُوا They do not falter. They are determined. When they begin the project, they are determined that this is the right cause. And I am going to give whatever it takes to support this cause. Number two, nor weakened. وَمَا ضَعُفُوا Nothing is going to weaken them. Because there is a lot of pressure here and there. There is a lot of intimidation here and there. It is not going to weaken them. 
وَمَسْتَكَانُوا They do not succumb to pressure. They do not demean istikana when you demean yourself, when you sell yourself. You can't stand any longer. You collapse. Psychologically, mentally, you collapse. You sell yourself. وَمَسْتَكَانُوا وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الصَّابِرِينَ Imam Hassan said to his army, an army who was not willing to fight, he stood in Madain, this is how he addressed his army. He said to, him, to them, وَكُنْتُمْ فِي مَسِيرِكُمْ إِلَى صَفِّينَ With my father Ali ibn Abi Talib, when he asked you to go to Safin to meet Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan on the Syrian-Iraqi border in Al-Anbar province, وَكُنْتُمْ فِي مَسِيرِكُمْ إِلَى صَفِّينَ وَدِينُكُمْ أَمَامُكُمْ Your faith was in the front. Now, وَأَصْبَحْتُمُ الْيَوْمُ وَدُنْيَاكُمْ أَمَامَ دِينِكُمْ That is the difference. Yesterday, your faith was in the front of dunya. Today, you put dunya in front of your faith. This is what happens. When dunya is put before deen, before faith, before religion, before your principles and values, we lose. We lose. God says in chapter 3 to the companions of the Prophet, مِنْكُمْ مَنْ يُرِيدُ الدُّنْيَا وَمِنْكُمْ مَنْ يُرِيدُ الْآخِرَ God says, I know about your hearts and your minds and your intentions. I'm going to tell you the story. Do you want to know why you were defeated? Not because your enemies had more weapon and more men. Not because of that. Because among you, some people, they, مِنْكُمْ مَنْ يُرِيدُ الدُّنْيَا They were seekers of dunya. And مِنْكُمْ, on the other hand, who are people who are seeking the Akhirah. So when the entire army is not seeking the Akhirah, the army is going to collapse. When we put dunya before the deen, we retreat, we disintegrate. We disintegrate. The Prophet ﷺ did not have good followers in Mecca. Didn't have. He had to leave his birthplace. He left. After 53 years, living in the same neighborhood, 53 years, he left Mecca to go to Medina because he had followers, Ansar, helpers. And he lived the last 10 years of his life in Medina. 53 in Mecca, only 10 years in Medina. And he's buried in Medina. He's a new home. Why is a new home? Because he found followers, supporters who are willing to give, who are willing to sacrifice. Ali ibn Abi Talib, many people say, why he gave allegiance to the Shaykhain? He gave allegiance because he didn't find any followers. Only five or six people who were willing to sacrifice. The rest, they joined the majority. Musa alayhi salam, the same. فَفَرَرْتُ مِنْكُمْ لَمَّا خِفْتُكُمْ He ran away, فَرَرْتُ He ran away from his birthplace in Egypt. He ran away. Because they wanted to murder him. Same thing with Nuh. Nuh who worked very hard for a long period of time. For a long period of time. At the end, Allah says, وَمَا آمَنَ مَعَهُ إِلَّا قَلِيلٌ إِلَّا قَلِيلٌ No one accepted his invitation, his religion, except very few. إِلَّا قَلِيلٌ This is why. He couldn't do anything. At the end, he said, "Rabbi inni da'awtu qawmin. Rabbi la tadar ala al-ardi min al-kafirin dayyara. His last resort is to ask God to send his curse upon them. They were not willing to follow him. So physically, he was defeated. He was defeated. And this is why they had the flood. If people would believe in him, there would be no flood, no punishment. Same thing with Imam Hassan alayhi salam. He had to sign the peace treaty because لِأَنِّي لَمْ أَجِدْ أَنصَارًا And he says وَلَوْ وَجَدْتُ أَنصَارًا لَقَاتَلْتُهُ لَيْلِ وَنَهَارِ I would have fought this corruption, this corrupt man day and night but I don't have real followers, genuine followers who are ready to sacrifice, who are ready to give their life. Someone comes into the tent and he stabs Imam Hassan and he says to him, لَقَدْ أَشْرَكْتَ يَا حَسَنْ كَمَا أَشْرَكَ أَبُوكَ مِنْ قَبْلِ One of his army officers. 
He tries to assassinate him and he says, you disbelieved in God as your father Ali disbelieved before. This was the type of people that gathered around him. And he had to sign the sulh, the ceasefire with Muawiyah bin Abi Sufyan. وَكَأَيٍّ مِنْ نَبِيٍّ قَاتَلَ مَعَهُ رَبِّيُّونَ كَثِيرٍ فَمَا وَهَنُوا لِمَا أَصَابَهُمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَمَا ضَعُفُوا وَمَا اسْتَكَانُوا وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الصَّابِرِينَ صدق الله العلي العظيم وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين